I remember getting on the other side of that mountain. Just as we were kind of leaving, I stopped the guys and I was like, I just need a minute. And I'm just sitting there like hunched over in so much pain. I literally was so scared because I thought I'm not gonna have feeling in these fingers ever again. Hey guys, welcome back. I wanna do something a little bit different in this video because most of my videos have been really matter of fact with facts. And I really wanted to do that so you guys could level up your action sports photography in less time. That has always been my goal. That has been my mission of this channel. And with doing that for about a year, sharing content here on YouTube, I really wanted to take the opportunity to allow you guys to get to know me a little bit more personal. And what better way to do that was sharing my top five photos that I absolutely love and the stories that go behind them because there are some pretty crazy stories that go along with these photos. So get comfy, let's get into the first photo here. All right, so this winter shot here definitely has to be one of my favorite winter shots for a few reasons. Obviously for its technicality, I love the mountains in behind and love the rider, just like that wide landscape. This is definitely a photo that I wanna have framed someday, but the story behind this one was probably crazier than the photo itself. So this location that we got out to to take this photo, it was probably one of the coolest experiences that I've ever had in terms of going out to take a photo, but as well, maybe one of the scariest for a few reasons. To get out to this location specific, I was riding with guys that were probably riding snowmobiles for, I'd say probably eight or nine years now and they are super talented at what they do. They are very familiar with terrain. They're really familiar with how to handle a snowmobile. And these guys were so gracious to bring me out to such a crazy location, but they really wanted to get into this one spot specific. And so what we had to do in order to get there was basically skirt around this mountaintop. But the craziest part about that was we were riding on this little goat trail and not just riding on it. We had to basically tip our snowmobiles up on their side and we had to ride the ridge, probably I would say 200 feet, maybe a little bit more. And you're riding that snowmobile on its side. So you have very little room for error because if you go down the side, like I didn't even know what was down below because it was quite steep, but then there was some trees there and I don't trust myself enough to ride that down and then be able to pull out of it and then ride back up. So there was a lot of room for error on this. And thankfully these guys were super helpful. They were like, okay, try it. But there was a couple times where I was like, I'm gonna mess this up because I got to this one point where the snowmobile was teetering on the hillside and I'm just sitting there with all my weight on the side that was facing up the hill and like I'm just trying to breathe because this is such an intense moment for me. Thankfully somebody came down, they helped me and they rode it out of that spot but it was such a crazy location when we got into the spot and it was probably one of the most memorable moments out snowmobiling because it was such a challenge like it was such a lot of work to get out to that spot but then I remember taking a video when I was up on the top all you could see was mountain peaks. And it was, it was crazy. Like one of the most surreal moments for me just to sit there and be able to look around and I'm like, wow, I am so small amongst the vastness of mountains that surround me. So it's minus 20 up top right now. I am freezing. I can't even feel my cheeks. It's crazy. Oh my goodness. This is such a crazy moment. What a blessing it is to be able to just like feel that, just feel how small you are in comparison to these mountains. And so as we were shooting throughout the day, it got to a point where it was getting closer to the end of the day and I was out shooting and maybe it was probably, I would say about minus 25 and with the wind chill, it was probably about minus 30 degrees Celsius. And I didn't have heated gloves at the time. I didn't have really any gloves outside of my snowmobiling gloves. And so whenever I wanted to take photos, I basically have to take off my gloves, go in my backpack, grab my camera. And that camera is freezing cold. So I'm literally holding the camera, shooting my buddies for, I don't know, like 20, 30 minutes at a time. And maybe in between the shots, I'd be putting on my gloves, but the inside of the gloves were cold. And so I basically just continued to freeze my hands. And it got to the point where we were going out and leaving. We still had to go back over that little goat trail kind of in the dark. It was actually pretty crazy, but thankfully the snowmobiles had those heated grips, but you know what happens when your hands kind of thaw out from that really deep cold, they start to feel a lot of pain. And if you've ever got to that point where your hands were so cold and then you warm them up, it's 
such a painful sensation because all the blood flow is flowing back into your fingers. And I remember getting on the other side of that mountain. And just as we were kind of leaving, I stopped the guys and I was like, I just need a minute. And I'm just sitting there like, kind of just like hunched over in so much pain because as the blood's like flowing back to them, I'm just feeling like my, my hands are on fire, literally like they were scorching. I was just clenching my teeth because there's just so much pain. The crazy thing is I couldn't feel my middle finger and my pinky finger the tips of each of those fingers on both hands for I think it was around two weeks before I could actually start to have any feeling and as well the skin peeled off right from the joint all the way underneath the fingernail and I'm pretty sure I looked it up I'm pretty sure it was like mild frostbite I don't know 100% but I literally was so scared because I thought I'm not gonna have feeling in these fingers ever again. Immediately after that, I was like, okay, I'm going to the store, I'm buying heated gloves, and I'm gonna have gloves so that I don't ever have to go through a situation like this again because it was painful. If you can get heated gloves or even like uh, a heated muff where you can like throw your hands into just to like warm them up quick so that they don't get to that point. So that was one of the craziest stories out snowmobiling and that's kind of why this picture is so special to me all right moving on to the second photo here so this shot in particular i chose as my second favorite and i really love this photo for a few reasons i was always trying to collaborate with a few guys that did stunt riding back home in ontario and i was like really trying to get into shooting these guys because they do some wild stuff like they have this big crew and they go and tour and do all these crazy stunts on Harleys and it's such a cool event. And I finally got to collaborate with a guy that does some of these stunts and I was just like, this dude is nuts. I think that's why I love photography the most, especially doing action sports photography because you get to meet some athletes that do some wild stuff and this guy was pulling some crazy stunts now with all the behind the scenes footage that i've shown you here and what i've shown you with the picture they don't correlate and there's a reason why another reason why i love this photo in particular is because i completely replaced the background i basically cut out my subject cut out the pavement and then pasted in and composited this whole background scene and like the gravel on the side, like the gravel strip in behind my rider, the environment, everything was all composited for this photo. And then I did like that initial color grade over everything. And it's so funny because I've shared this photo many times and people are like, oh, nice shot. Like nobody knew, nobody could tell. And maybe now you could see it a little bit more. I don't, I don't know. It's still a photo that I'm really proud of. Have you ever been in those moments where you're out taking photos and you're kind of in this state of just like awe because you're like the location is perfect the lighting is perfect the subject is perfect like everything is just working and you're just sitting there you're taking your photos you look at the back of the screen you're like this is insane i've had a few of those moments actually a lot of those moments where i'm just sitting there and i'm just laughing to myself because i'm like these photos are actually the craziest photos i've ever taken and it's funny because every photo shoot I'm on, it's like a different level of that in different environments. And that's what I love about doing action sports photography because it's like every time you go and take photos, you're always leveling up and you're always getting better. And as you continue to get better and realize things like, okay, I want my composition to be different or I want to try this type of lighting or I want to work with this different athlete and they bring a new aspect to the game then it just really helps you to level up. And when you can look at the back of your LCD and you're seeing the photos that come out, like especially with this one, I can't believe this moment is real right now. And the story behind this photo in particular was we were shooting in Muskoka, Ontario and Muskoka is really known for its beautiful lakes and there's like millionaire homes on these lakes and it's such a crazy location. And I was shooting for this water sports company and they do lessons for wakeboarding and wake surfing. And the guys were like, all right, I wanna go out and I wanna do this morning shoot. And I was like, all right, I'm down. Like love morning shoots because you get that nice sunrise. And it just so happened that the next day it was going to be like stunning. Not like hardly any clouds. It was going to be such a beautiful day. And we're like, we're gonna capitalize on this day. 
And so we got up before the sunrise, got down to the docks before the sunrise and the glow of the sun as we're just preparing, as we're getting ready to go, it was so magical because like the sun was massive and the glow over top of the trees and the riders riding and like, you know, they're, they're jumping the wake and they're, they're hitting their tricks and whatnot. It's just such a surreal experience. And we were in a chase boat as I was taking this photo and we had the main boat just across from us and we had them backlit and just that feeling of, you know, that cold misty air as it's hitting my face. And then, you know, you get those light tunes playing in the background as, you know, we're driving and we're just trying to get those shots. Me and the videographer, it was just such a cool experience. There was oftentimes the videographer and I, we just would look at each other and we would just smile because it was just such a cool experience. And you're kind of in this blissful state where you're like, this is such a perfect environment for so many reasons. And I just loved how this shot turned out because it gives so much context of the driver of our boat. And then as well, you know, you got the rider jumping in the back and then you have the boat there. You know, it kind of just like ties this photo all together. And to be honest, after the shoot, I really, really, really wanted to dive in a lot more into water sports shooting and, you know, shooting wake surfing, wakeboarding. It had such a different energy to it than all the other types of photography. And I didn't know if I would really enjoy it that much. I didn't think it'd be that interesting, but just the atmosphere of people on the boat and the athletes, it's just such a a cool place to be, especially when you're riding in these really high-end boats and you're, you're shooting with these really top athletes. Such a cool moment to kind of be in this. And like, I love being in that state where, you know, you look at the back of the screen, you just, you, you just can't help but smile because it's just such a cool moment to be in. All right, so this next one, I think I'm gonna have to do two photos because they kind of tie together. This was kind of the first time that I went out and actually shot dirt bikers in a setting like this because I flew out to British Columbia just to specifically shoot with these guys and just kind of hang out and just see if this would be something that I would enjoy. And sure enough, I got to have such an awesome opportunity to be able to shoot in such a beautiful location. And there was a guy that I was looking at in particular at the time and his name was Nick Dean. And Nick has such a unique style. He has such a creative outlook on his work. And I love how he portrays motion and I love how he will add elements into his photo to really just enhance the visual. His color grading is absolutely incredible. And I was looking at his work and I was like, okay, what are the things that Nick does to really make his images pop? And I really tried to take a few of those things. And one of those things was shooting kind of at like that lower angle and really trying to capture your athletes in motion and kind of give that aggressive feeling. And a lot of that too came with motion blur. And so this photo, when I was really low and you know, I had the rider kind of circling out in front of me, it was just so cool because I had, you know, that motion blur and I was just so close to the rider, like the rider's tire was right in front of me. And he was basically just kind of doing donuts around me, just kind of circling. And it was just so cool because I was like, I couldn't believe that with just a couple adjustments, like, you know, being at this lower angle, having your shutter speed at a lower shutter so that you can capture that motion blur, you know, just like very basic things. But I was really starting to just teach myself because, you know, there wasn't anybody like myself on YouTube that was teaching action sports photography. So I just kind of had to go out into the field and, and teach myself based off of other photographers that I admired. And, you know, Nick is one, Aaron Brimhall is another, and just like looking at their photos and just seeing, okay, what do they do? And how can I implement that into my own photography? Even though, yes, this one where the, the rider is circling me in front definitely is one of my favorite photos from the beginning of my career. I would say probably the one that tops it is this other photo where my rider is riding away from me. And I think because it adds so much context, so much depth and dynamic to my actual location you know just having the mountain in the background kind of faded into the clouds and you know just having such a, a moody environment that i could finally start to push a grade with and i could really start to experiment with and this shot i would love to have framed someday and 
you know, maybe when I have a bigger place outside of this trailer, I will definitely get a lot of these shots framed. All right, in this last one, probably one of my favorite all time photos. This is the only photo that I actually have framed that I've ever printed. I have never printed any of my photos except for this photo specifically. So we went out to my buddy Malcolm's dirt bike track and he has an insane enduro track. He built it himself and it's so dialed in for how he rides and he's such a talented rider and he's learned a lot from this track. And my younger brother and I were out filming a documentary on Malcolm's life, which Hopefully the documentary will be coming out maybe in like spring. And as we were shooting, it was late September and we were just coming off of a really dry summer in 2022. And I don't think that it had rained yet. And so when we were shooting this documentary, every time Malcolm would ride, there was just so much dust in the air. In this day in particular, where we were shooting all the riding clips for this documentary, there was no wind at all, which was insane because, you know, you had all this dust in the atmosphere, but then you had the sun just beaming through. It just created these crazy light pockets and it just really revealed the dust. It was kind of like atmospheric haze, but we didn't have to do it. It was all from the dust. So it really turned into such a cool location. and. It was funny because my younger brother was filming with my photography camera and I was filming with a different camera and I just kind of stopped the shoot and I was like, dude, I have to take some photos right now because if I do not take photos in this location, in this perfect moment, I'm going to regret it for the rest of my life because everything looks so crazy and I was like, I have to capitalize on this. So I had Malcolm do a few pivot turns and the timing on this photo was perfect. That's why I say you know, for people to get a camera that has high frames per second because, you know, you can capture each single moment and you don't feel like you're missing any moments because if, you know, you have a camera that shoots less than 10 frames per second, you're usually kind of like skipping a little bit within the amount that it captures of your subject in motion. And so that's why I love having a camera with such high frames per second. And as he was doing this pivot turn, I had my camera on a high burst mode. The timing was just perfect. Like he had it angled just at the right angle and like the exact timing, you know, the sun was right in behind those forks. So it just really, you know, bloomed out those highlights. You got the dust there. It reminds me so much of that entire summer. It kind of highlights our summer as I was out shooting with a ton of athletes that summer. And we were just touring around British Columbia, shooting with as many athletes as possible. And it was just such a cool time in my life to share with my younger brother and, you know, just being able to capture this moment and have a photo that I was so proud of and many photos that I was proud of from that photo shoot. But this one in particular was really special because it was just a photo that I don't believe could be recreated to this day. Probably one of my favorite photos that I've ever taken. So if you made it to the end of the video, I just want to say thank you so much for just hanging out, getting to know me, getting to hear about my stories. And I really do appreciate you guys. And I want to say thank you so much for your support. And I really look forward to creating more content out in the field for you guys and just showing you exactly what my workflow looks like and just how to level up your action sports photography in all different aspects. And I just couldn't be more excited for this year ahead. So with all that being said, I'll see you in the next video.